Okay, today I'm going to do a video demo of Superior Drummer 2.0 and the Metal Foundry Expansion Pack, which is basically um, a pack that adds a whole bunch of really cool extreme metal drum samples um, and MIDI tracks that you can use within Superior Drummer. So what I did was I started a session in Pro Tools and you'll see as Pro Tools loads up, you'll see that I basically only have one stereo instrument track and here it is. The stereo instrument track has one insert. The insert is Superior Drummer, so you specify it that way. Um, and so basically you look at the um, uh, metal, uh, the, the Superior Drummer interface and it has a bunch of tabs across the top. You know, it has the Construct tab here, which basically gives you the whole drum kit and all of the possible drums that you can add into your kit. Right now, with the kit that's loaded, it doesn't have these symbols on it, so you can see they're almost like ghost type symbols. And you can preview all of the drums by clicking with your mouse. Right now they're not all loaded into RAM, so I think they're playing off of the hard drive, but once you find a drum kit, you can actually load it into your, um, into your RAM, and then it plays it directly from your RAM, and you don't even have to worry about access to your hard drive. So let me load this one metal kit and you'll see on the bottom here it says uh, loaded 31 megabytes and I think that's just you know some of the preview samples if you um, take a look at it, uh, it the total memory required is 754 megs and under settings if you check out your settings you have 1400 megs that's a memory usage limit in it that really limits the amount of drums that you can load into there so you free up your RAM in your computer for other plugins in, in Pro Tools but um, 1400 is plenty for this one so let me load this drum kit in and now what it's doing is it's loading the samples in directly from the hard drive and loading them into RAM so once these start playing they're not accessing the hard drive anymore they're actually accessing just the RAM and and, and it really frees things up um, and it allows you to just play things on demand it's really cool so while this is loading actually it's already loaded so you can take a look at um, the grooves preview and this is really cool the metal foundry expansion pack comes with a bunch of MIDI tracks that were programmed actually programmed and played by these guys Dirk Verburen, Gene Hoagland um, and Peter Fredlander um, and these are basically MIDI tracks that were played by an, uh, each of these drummers just playing drums uh, on, on e-drums and directly into a sequencer um, Library of the Extreme is something that I'm going to be using more because it has more extreme uh, beats and these are blast beats and so um, if you look at the way the blast beats are organized they're organized into first of all the blast beats and fills but if you looked at, at the straight blast beats they organize by tempo 200 beats per minute and they go all the way down to 270 beats per minute um, I'll be using 240 today and if you look at the old school blast, it's also broken into the the symbol that the guy hits during the blast. So if you want to do a hats open blast, for example, you know there's eight variations on it. If you want to do a ride blast, there's another eight variations on it. The really cool thing about this interface, though, is you can actually preview some of these uh, variations and and just blast. You can preview them in real time just by clicking on it and and listening to it like this. And the neat thing about it is you can just click on one of these as you're looping each of the blasts and you can hear what each different one sounds like in real time. This feels actually kind of cool because you can hear the different velocities that the guy's playing the snare with and how the sample changes as he plays it louder. And one really cool thing about the way that this previews too is these are beats that are played in 
240 beats per minute, for example. Um, but you can really vary up the tempo when you listen to them in your host application. And so in Pro Tools, I have this set up to be, let's see what my tempo is. It's 270 right now. Um, say I wanted to preview those actually in 240. I can change this to 240. And now when I play the samples back, they'll play in 240 beats per minute. But you'll see if, as I'm looping one of the samples, if I change up the tempo in my host application while I'm previewing it, it actually changes the tempo in preview. So check this out. And so once you find a blast that you like, you can take it, um, drag it actually from right here, and you can drag it into your host application. I think this is really neat. And so now I have all of my beats here in my host application. And the cool thing about it is when you look at the beats, you look at it up close, you'll see that on the grid, maybe you can't really see it on the video right now, but on the grid, None of the beats are actually lined up and quantized perfectly. You know, they're played like a real drummer would, not perfect, you know, very humanized. And and those are just, you know, the, the timing. But if you look at the velocity too, you'll see that all of the drums are hit at different um, strengths. And so certain strikes are really hard and certain strikes are really not hard. And so when, you know, when a drummer is blasting, he's not going to be able to hit the snare really hard and really consistently. It's going to be a little lighter. Um, he might emphasize the one or whatever, but it really gives you a degree of realism to these samples that you can't get just by programming kick and snare and kick and snare and kick and snare and not offsetting it a little bit and not varying the, the velocity. With Library of Extreme, you have that all set up for you so that you can work it that way. And so another cool thing is that, you know, if you're not happy with a stock beat the way that it is, you might actually go into one of the fills or something and you might add, say, say I want to add like another kick into here, a, a kick hit, you know. I can add some more kick hits in here. And if you preview it, you know, you're not going to really be able to hear it at this tempo. Uh, but if I slow it down, um, you'd be able to hear it. So that's really cool. You know, you can have, uh, you got the flexibility of uh, real sounding samples. Um, but you also have the ability to go in and edit them too. Um, I think it's really neat. I think it's a really good application. And, um, you know, the ease of use is really, uh, really important for me because you can just be writing a song and you're, you're, the inspiration is there. You want to just pull up a drum beat really fast. You want to change a tempo on it. You want to drag it into your uh, host application. And it's, it's really easy to do it with Superior Drummer too. So if you're in the market for a good uh, drum sample program, and something that gives you really good MIDI tracks. Um, I highly recommend checking out uh, tunetrack.com, looking up Superior Drummer 2.0. I think it's actually being phased out right now. Um, so it's uh, being blown out at, on a, at a sale price at Musician's Friend. So if you're looking for it, um, I, I really think it has a lot of useful application the way it is. Uh, I don't see a lot that they can do to really improve it. Um, but of course, they're going to do it um, someday, you know. But as of right now, it's a really useful tool. So check it out, tunetrack.com, uh, Superior Drummer 2.0, uh, the Metal Foundry Expansion Pack, and Library of the Extreme.